everyone so today is gonna be a bit of a different video um, I don't know that I ever made this very clear throughout all of the videos until now but I am an orchestra conductor that's my profession that's why I love talking about opera and classical music and know the things that I know about it and I realized that a I barely ever mentioned it and B perhaps you would be interested to uh, hear some thoughts on being an orchestra conductor so if you were after learning about a particular piece or music check out any other of my videos but in this one I thought I would just have a look here in real time to some of the questions that are on the internet about being a conductor and sort of answer them. If there is any questions you would like to ask me about conducting, please leave them in the comments below and so perhaps in a couple of weeks I can do another video but answering your questions. Okay, so the first thing when I type why is an orchestra conductor dot 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 is uh, stuff about whether a conductor is necessary or not. Why do orchestras need a conductor? Do orchestras really need conductors, etc.? What is the point of conductors? So I can answer this question sort of in two layers. Overall, a conductor is sort of like the CEO of a company, meaning is the CEO doing the little things that is, is the CEO doing everything in the company that it's making the company run? No, but the CEO is there sort of overseeing everything and having a point of view of what the company is and you know, making sure that everything is towards that and that if something is out of that, that it realigns. That is sort of what a conductor is in its essence because it is a leadership role. But where it is a bit more interesting is that the scores that we deal with sometimes are very vague. And so it might say something like, fast for a piece or slow and as we know fast or slow are not absolute terms they're you know whatever you interpret that to be so the conductor is the person who has you know studied a lot of history and theory and harmony and whatnot to try and understand what the better interpretation of all those indications is and so you go to the orchestra and most of the time, if the orchestra is very good and very professional, they're probably already 80% aligned with that. But you are there to, you know, sort of lead the vision of the piece and make sure that if anything kind of, you know, if someone is playing with an articulation that you think was probably not what Mozart wanted because X, Y, Z, then you can propose that that is changed. Now, this is a more holistic answer. Then, depending on the piece, a conductor is actually 1000% necessary for more organizational reasons. Like, you know, stuff from the 1900s or with a lot of changes in bar or a lot of pauses. You know, if something says fermata, which is like a pause, you stay on a note and it's supposed to be at the discretion of the players who someone has to decide when we're all leaving that note otherwise we're all just stuck there and you know looking at each other going what's happening so it's sort of like a person that is you know being the common denominator and making sure we're all doing the same and in case of contemporary music or things that actually has changes of bars and is very complex to read um you do need someone to beat time so that you are very sure of how everything is supposed to be. Well, there's a lot of how much does an orchestra conductor make a year? How much does an orchestra conductor get paid? I cannot answer that question because I do not know. Um, I am in the initial stages of my career. Corona has been kicking ass of the music industry and so I don't think I am the best person to talk about conductor's finances. What does an orchestra conductor stand on? It's just a podium. It's because sometimes orchestras are very large and so you need to be seen by people that are very far away. Um, say in my case I'm not very tall so yeah it's useful just so that people can see you without having to make too much effort. What is an orchestra conductor's stick called? It's called a baton. Um, let me show you. Yeah, as you can see, it's pretty much a stick with oops, stuff on the end like that. Um, which look, I mean, a baton is there to sort of extend your arm for pretty much two reasons. One, because, um, like I said, a lot of players are really far away. I'm gonna put this here. 
like I said, a lot of players are really far away and so if you just conduct with your hands, it might be a bit unclear what you're doing. And also it helps us conductors because if, you know, if I just do this, which is not a lot of movement for me, um, it's super enhanced by the baton. And honestly, sometimes an opera performance is like three hours. So if you are, you know, three hours moving all your shoulder and arm, um, you end up really sore and you end up really sore anyways. Um, and especially I will say that a lot of musicians do not put a lot of time in exercising, myself included, and that is terrible because it's such a physical activity we do. We are moving our upper body nonstop. If you're a conductor, you're sort of standing nonstop. So um, very bad as musicians, we need to take care of our physique much more. Why do orchestra conductors have long hair? If they do, that's great news for me because I've always had long hair and it'd be like, oh, should I tie it? Is it in my face? So. I, I really did not notice this as a trend. Yeah, I mean, let's bring, let's bring conductors with long hair, please. Is being an orchestra conductor hard? Look, it's, um, I feel weird talking about this because no one wants to go like, oh, when I do so hard. Um, and I don't know, I mean, I think hard is a word that it's very subjective. I mean, I could say yes, but on the other hand, I don't think being an orchestra conductor is harder than being a surgeon. I could never have someone's life on the line based on what I do. It'd be like, no thank you. However, it is kind of hard in the sense that you have to be on top of so many things. You have to understand how instruments work, even if you don't play them, if you play them great. Um, you need to understand the physicality of playing that instrument, the, the differences within the range of, you know, how loud it can sound, what articulations it can produce, in order to um, ask something of them. You, otherwise, you might end up, you know, asking something that is physically not possible. On the other hand, you need to know your music incredibly well, uh, hopefully by memory, at some point it's probably impossible, but um, yeah, you need to be extremely prepared. You need to be really good in time management when you're there working with the orchestra because sometimes you might have very limited time and you need to know where the priorities are and how to quickly um, get things done. There's also a whole psychological aspect of how you communicate with the orchestra and you being the leader, especially if it's, if, you're, if it's your orchestra in the sense that you are there always and you're not just a guest. Um, it is a position of leadership, so what you do is important, how you relate with them is important, the values you hold are important, and this is all very complex, not to mention that whilst you're conducting, you also need to be really listening to what's coming back at you, so you can change things, so I don't know if someone is getting out of beat or if something is being too loud and overshadowing some main melody you need to be like a dj that is doing this in real time also also if you work in opera you really need to know your languages if you don't you kind of should as well because you might end up traveling but even if you're very localized and you're not interested in traveling around for your profession if you work in opera wherever you are you're going to encounter german italian french um, and you need to at the very least be on top of it so that you can study the score otherwise you're studying music you have no idea what they're saying or you have no idea what word exactly is being said at that high note. You just need to know your languages. It is always better if you just speak them and you will find that conductors usually speak at the very least a, yeah, a bit of Italian, French and some German understanding. I think I've been rambling long enough for you to get the gist that you're just on top of a lot of things at once. Do orchestra conductors live longer? Uh, hey, I, I hope so. Another question that pops up very um, regularly is how you become an orchestra conductor. And I can't really answer this because um, I think everybody's journey is quite different. He agrees. One of the things, I mean, there are degrees for conducting. I've personally done a bachelor and a master's. There are a lot of people that don't go through uni for conducting. They might start in an instrument and then, you know, develop into conducting with a private teacher or something like that. But this is touching on a subject um, 
that I want to bring out about how hard it is to be a conductor and it is more about how hard it is to prepare for being a conductor to study because we just don't have an instrument in our rooms and so I cannot even if I wanted to study conducting for eight hours a day like a pianist might do I, ju I simply can't so all you can do is sit and work on the piano and read about the composer and read about other things and you know work on some instrument if you're also playing an instrument and sometimes we do stand and wave <laughs> towards the air I know a lot of people have asked me this on you know comments on YouTube um, um, and yes, sometimes we do that, but we also need to keep our bodies moving because you might have one opportunity every now and then and if you don't find a way to feel trained by then, it's very hard to advance and usually it means you have to have also some resources to perhaps pay for master classes and that really um, is a barrier for people that might want to conduct, um, if I'm being honest, because it's, yeah, I mean, for every instrument, you have to be able to have an instrument. And also the human aspect, to stand there in front of all those people that are looking at you, waiting for you to say something or do something, how to be clear, how to be succinct, how to be honest. Um, it's things that you just cannot practice in your room. Um, so you go there every time you make mistakes and you learn. But sometimes, because those opportunities just don't come that often, you feel like you cannot afford to make those mistakes because you, it's not like you can repeat this over and over. Um, so preparing to be a conductor can be quite a difficult feat. What do orchestra conductors wear? Normally very boring stuff. I myself um, really struggle with it, but generally with what the orchestra wears, normally everybody wears black. Um, sometimes like frack, you know, suits, and um, conductors usually also just wear black. Um, I think that's very... I understand why that is, you know, you want to unify the thing so that you can kind of concentrate on the sound coming at you and not so much on the individual parts, if that makes sense. But I think that it's uh, honestly a really boring trend that does not let people relate to uh because you're just all wearing black it's just so you know gloomy so hopefully you will move away from that i don't know towards what i don't have this figured out i'm still wearing black what does an orchestra conductor weigh to keep time okay so this is interesting like i said um there's a lot of organizational aspects of what you beat. We have, you know, patterns for 2-4 or 3-4 or 4-4, four, four, which is just, yeah. If you hear any songs, you will notice that there is an accent every such an amount of beats, and that is what this stuff means, pretty much. But always the last beat is sort of up and the first beat of the next bar is down. So whether you have four, the four is always going to be here and the one here or three the same. Or if you had 7,000 million, the last one is always here. And also, which is sort of interesting and I don't think a lot of people know, everything that a conductor does is in anticipation because you're supposed to give the musicians uh, content on how they're supposed to make the sound. So how fast is it? How loud is it? And any other um, articulation, like do you want it, you know, pointy and sharp or do you want it like, you know, gooey and legato? So everything you do has all of this information. It's, it's like body language. If I, you know, go to you like this, you're gonna think that I have a problem with you. If I go to you like this, you're gonna think that whatever you think, but you know what I mean. And so um, all of that information needs to be given before, because if I give it as you're doing it, it's too late. You can't start doing something and then change midway. And if the second that you stop doing that, you are just dancing with them. You're not actually giving them any information that is going to help them, you know, change the sound that is coming you're just sort of kind of vibing with them if you are right on time with them all right guys i think i have talked long enough about this i hope this was entertaining to you perhaps you heard something that you didn't know about conducting and like i said i would be more interested to hear from actual people and not whatever google is telling me people are looking for so please write in the comments and if there are enough questions i'll do a follow-up video in like you know a week or two um and i will see you next time